apologize for the mess. We're actually moving offices, shops right now. So a lot of stuff in the background, but today we're going to talk about milling lumber. Milling lumber is one of the most important things for setting yourself up for success when you're building furniture, but we hardly ever talk about it, right? It's a pretty boring process. Same thing every single time. So we never really show it in our videos. I know a lot of other video makers don't as well. And so today I'm going to take you through the whole process, tell you tips and tricks to getting it right. I mean, it's, it seems simple, but it's really not. There's some things that you really need to pay attention to to ensure that your boards not only get square, parallel, and flat, but that they stay that way from day to day. Because, you know, we've all had that experience where we mill something up, it's nice and square, and then we come back the next day and it's no longer, and it's pretty frustrating. So let me take you through the process. We're gonna start by talking about the different types of lumber you start with, and then walk you through how a professional or myself would do it. So when you buy lumber, it's gonna come in three sizes usually. Of course, there are exceptions to this, but it's gonna start with four quarter, which is represented by a four over a four. Now that's designed to say four quarter inches, so one inch, but the person who originally milled the rough lumber, they're gonna take a quarter inch for waste in getting it ready for you. So they're still gonna bill you for that extra quarter inch, even though it's only three quarters of an inch wide. Then it's gonna be six quarter represented as a six over a four, which is gonna be about one and a quarter inch. That's six quarter inches, which is an inch and a half. But again, they are accounting for the quarter inch of waste when they ran it through a planer. And then finally eight quarter, which is your two inch lumber, but it's actually one and three quarter inch thick. These come in three different types of milled lumber. It's S2S, S3S, and S4S. I also forgot to mention that lumber comes in rough sawn. Now this is a piece of a slab that was rough sawn. I actually milled this up myself, but we have a bandsaw mill here. So rough sawn would be sort of a square-ish board uh, that is just right off the bandsaw or whatever saw milled the lumber. They haven't run it through a planer at all. And then you get to S2S, which stands for surfaced on two sides. That means it's been run through a planer on both sides and you're gonna get two edges that are rough sawn like this that you see here. Here's kind of a thicker, better example of what that rough sawn looks like on an edge. S3S is gonna be like this board here where it's surfaced on two sides and then it's run through a straight rip saw which is gonna give you one flat square side. So that's gonna be square to the two plane side and it's gonna be ripped and square. And then S4S is gonna be planed and surfaced on all four sides. So that means they've, they've flattened the two faces to make them parallel and then ripped the two sides to make them square and parallel. This is, of course, the most expensive way to buy lumber, whereas working your way down S3S, S2S, and then rough sawn, it gets cheaper down the line. So if you have milling equipment, which is, I'm about to take you through that process, buying rough lumber can save you a ton of money because the cost difference between S4S and rough sawn lumber is astronomical. I think at my local lumber yard, I could pay 250 bucks for a S4S board of walnut. Whereas if I drive south a little bit to a lumber distributor, uh, I can get, you know, walnut for about eight or nine bucks a board foot, which is so, so much cheaper. So what does that mean for final dimension? Well, there's a lot of variables that affect that when you go into your milling process. The more milled a board is when you get an S4S, the less material you're gonna lose in milling. Are you still gonna need to do some milling? Of course. How lumber is stored, you know, whether, it, you know, when it goes from the lumber yard to your shop, the acclimation process when you get it to your shop, you really wanna let boards acclimate when you get them to your shop for at least a couple days, is all gonna make a difference in flatness and squareness of that board. If you get rough sun lumber, you're gonna lose a lot more to the milling process. If it's super cupped or twisted, you're gonna lose a lot more. Uh, sometimes in those scenarios, it's better to chop a board up into a couple pieces to eliminate some of that twist before you start milling. So there's lots of factors that affect your final dimension, but you can assume, I always plan for a quarter to half inch loss. So if I need an inch and a quarter inch thick board, I'm probably gonna buy eight quarter. Six quarter is really pushing it. You can sometimes make it work, especially if you rough cut some of your pieces first, you can get rid of some of that, the imperfections and that can help you maximize your amount of lumber. But you wanna plan for at least a quarter inch loss, if not a half inch. And if you're resawing, that makes another difference as well because Every time you resaw a board, it's gonna to cup towards the middle. There's always gonna be more, no matter how dry your board is, there will always be more moisture in the middle than there will be on the outside. 
And so as soon as you resaw it and you expose the middle of the board, it's going to want to cup towards where the moisture is releasing from. So you want to remember that when you're milling, milling should be at least a two day process, sometimes three, depending on how much you're doing. So day one is going to be rough milling. You're going to get stuff just flat and square. You're going to leave one side rough because uh, obviously one side goes over the joiner, the last side goes over the table saw. So you're going to leave one side rough. You're going to get your two faces flat and square. And you're going to let it sit because again, you exposed the inside of the board. So it's going to cup or twist a little bit. Not guaranteed, but most of the time it does twist a little bit and need to re-mill the board. If you're resawing, you obviously are going to do your rough milling first so you have something flat you can ride against the fence of your bandsaw. And then once you mill it, I like to clamp them with the outside edges in so that the moisture side is out. And sometimes that keeps it from bowing too much and I'll let it sit for a day or two and then I come back and mill the cup side. So let's talk about the process how it works and the difference between a planer and a jointer. Cause I get that question a lot and they are extremely different. So uh, let's come on in here. I'll show you. Now milling is a four step process. The way it works is you get a face flat on the jointer. Now why the jointer and not the planer? Cause the planer will make a face flat, but a jointer references off of the outfeed table. You can see a cutter comes in here and takes off where this marker is. And then this part of the jointer is going to reference off the cut area and it's going to drag the back of the board through. And that's going to create one flat side because you know, your jointer is flat. You've set it up correctly. I'll link a great video in your upper right hand corner of your screen on how to do that. And you get a board with one flat face. So that's number one, you get a flat face. And then that flat face references off of your fence, which is 90 degrees to your cutter. I like to mark it with this little Jesus fish looking thing that lets me know that that side has been milled and is ready to go. So I take that side and we are going to run it up. Now I'm showing you the number one side, but normally this would be against your fence. You're going to put it flat against your fence. You're going to have pressure against it and you're going to do the same thing. The cutter is going to take off material here and it's going to reference and give you not only a flat side, number two here, but it's going to be square to our number one. So now we have two sides done and we're going to go over to the planer. Let me show you. So now we're going to take our number one side because we know that is flat and we're going to put it down and we're going to do our number three side. And that is going to create a face that is parallel to number one. Now, why can't you just go straight to the planer, right? That makes it flat. Well, here's why. So if you have a board, it's all that a planer does is make it parallel to the spot right underneath the cutter head. So if the bottom of your board looks like this, the top of your board is going to be parallel to exactly this. Now this is of course a very extreme drawing, but imagine if you had a twist, right? And one side of your board is lower than the other, then it's going to enter. It's just going to keep the twist in the board because the pressure rollers in a planer are so strong and push down so hard. It's going to flatten it out just for a second while it's underneath the cutter head. And then it's just going to pop right back up when you go all the way through. So you're going to run number one through until you have a, a very clean face up here. That will be parallel. I usually will take like a, a pencil or something and draw lines on the top of my board. So I know when it is removed enough material to be parallel. And then once that's done, I'll flip it over one time and run number one through that helps a little bit with that rough milling problem that I was talking about where you introduce moisture. Usually on the jointer, you only take a little bit off and then on the planer, you take a lot more. So once this is free and clear, it's nice to just keep flipping it over until you get just about to that final dimension you want. If you're rough milling, you want to leave about an eighth of an inch. If you're final milling, you want to go to final dimension. And then from there, we're going to cut our number four side. And what is that going to do? We're going to do that on a table saw. We now have two flat and parallel faces and a side that is square to those two, because we know it was square to number one. It's now square to number two, three because number three is parallel to one. So we're going to go run number two against the table saw fence. And that is going to give us a nice clean board that has two parallel faces, two parallel sides that are all square to each other. So let me actually do this and show you how I do it.
quick little milling tip. The way to tell if your face is perfectly flat is take that face, put it down on your jointer. You can actually feel it suction to the outfeed side when you try and pick it up. There's just a little bit of suction. That means it's dead flat. So we've got a face that's flat, a side that is flat and square to that original face. Now we're gonna head over to the planer and then the table saw. Now we've got a board that is got two flat and parallel faces, two flat and parallel sides that are all square to each other, and we are golden for our furniture project. So a couple things to keep in mind. When you store your lumber, make sure you store it on a flat space overnight. It's helpful to put something heavy on top of it or even clamp it down because you don't wanna leave that to chance. You've done all this work to mill your lumber and then you come back the next day and it's slightly twisted or slightly bowed, nothing is more frustrating than that, especially thinking you were done. So make sure that you're conscious of how you store it. You also might wanna think about stickering material. You can just get like some equally cut pieces of plywood and stick them in between your boards. That'll help air circulate around the entire board. So moisture isn't coming out of one side of the board more than the other. Remember, if you're using thinner materials, like if you're working, if you've milled something down to like a half inch thick, it's really gonna have a chance to move overnight. So that would be something you'd wanna like clamp down. So that's the milling process. That's how everybody who builds furniture for a living does it. There really isn't too many variations unless you don't have a jointer. And I do have a great video, how to joint without a jointer. I'll link that here in the corner. Also, we are having a sale on 10 inch saw blades over on our website, both thin and full curve. I'm gonna leave a discount code down below if you wanna check those out. Guys, as always, thanks for watching and stay safe in the shop.